Welcome to 2K Sports. I'm Damon Bruce. Friday Hoops Fest. Now a chance to check out tonight's starting lineups. First for the Spurs, Parker and Danny Green are your one and your two. And in the middle, out of Brazil, taking with the 28th pick back in 2008, the 6'11 pivot man, Tiago Splitter. Then there's Kawhi Leonard, and it's Duncan in at the four slot. And then for the Miami Heat, Chalmers and D. Wade are the guards. And playing at the five, the always versatile 6'11 star big man, able to score inside and out, Chris Bosch. That's LeBron James, and it's Haslam in at the four. You can see the eye contact there. Gave a little nod and then burst to the rim for the alley oop slam. No doubt, Clark. A pair of teammates with a terrific feel for each other out on the floor. Mm -hmm. And what a play to make in a close game. A, a potential momentum builder. One thing with Wade that doesn't seem to be going away is his quickness off the dribble. He still has that devastating crossover. He may not be able to do it every night, but there are nights when you know, he just looks like he's right in his prime. San Antonio on defense. And Doris Burke caught up with Coach Greg Popovich. Doris? We talked about their defensive game plan. He said, for Dwayne Wade, you've got to make him a jump shooter and not fight for his pump fakes. When you do that, it's a foul or he's going to go right by you for the dunk. Kevin Wade known for that deadly shot fake. We'll see if they can stay disciplined. Thanks again, Doris. And Wade has a number of elusive moves, Clark, getting into the lane. He can hit the spin, the euro yeah. step, which I love, by the way. Yeah. And the, the windmill crossover. He's got it all. I mean, he's figured out how to get to that bucket. And I think the crossover is probably his custom move. Just as he changes directions, he swings the ball quickly over his head to the other side, avoiding the rip. And he makes it look so natural, you might think nothing of it. But youngsters around the league go to school on that one. That's a heck of a move. <laughs> Now, Parker, after Dwayne Wade's three-pointer that didn't go. Shot's good. Late reaction from the defense, and he's always going to make good on that. The Heat have gone two for four from the field so far today. Haslam can't get it to go. For San Antonio, they've gone three of four from the field to start out the game. You know, a big part of why the Spurs were so good last season, guys, was that they were able to finish games strong. You think a group of vets might run out of gas but the opposite was true with this group they turned it up down the stretch and were one of the most productive teams in the league in terms of fourth quarter points yeah something that makes him hard to defend is his ability to receive a pass and get off an accurate shot in one quick fluid motion so you better beware of where he is on the floor at all times one of the premier catch and shoot guys in the league steve there's no question about it well, Clark, a big part of why the Spurs were so good last year in the fourth was because they have so many options when possessions, you know, Steve start getting critical and the game is tight. Well, no question. you got Parker to create off the dribble. You can always throw it into the low post to Duncan. Uh, but on top of that, you've got a roster full of guys who understand how to play the game and, and know how to play each other. Just the experience that this group has gained together over the years, I think, allows them to execute under pressure. Easy look there, but, you know, he misses those once in a while. What a smooth finish. Well, he's certainly the one they won on the end of those breaks. He always finishes strong. 14 feet away. They grabbed their own miss. Here's Splitter. Goes up again. No good. Not a friendly rim at all. This trip down. Miami leading by four. Chalmers passed away. It's stolen by Green. In transition, here comes San Antonio. And they're going to count the bucket and send him to the line. It could be a three-point play. You know, with that much of a height advantage, that's exactly what you should do. Take it straight to the rim. San Antonio shooting their first free throw of the game. Well, what a series it was in the finals a year ago. Uh, such great basketball. Two teams that like to play up tempo. And I'll, I'll tell you, the Spurs had Miami. They had the series in the bag. They were one play away from wrapping it up in game six. But the miracle comeback uh, from the Heat, it led to the game seven victory and another title for the Miami Heat. Here's Leonard Anderson with the block. Hit his leg. And the official saying it was kicked. San Antonio making a switch here. Ellen Ellis checked in. Thank you. 
On defense, Miami. They lead by four. Bonner, that's a two-pointer. And it's good on the assist by Parker. Clark, it was interesting because the games themselves weren't particularly close or through the first half of the series, but things started to get really tight when they left San Antonio after game five. How about that, Kevin? You talk about things tightening up. Mm. We had a game for the ages in game six. 28.6 <laughs> seconds to go. The Spurs plus five. Miami needed a miracle, and they found it in the form of timely three-point shooting and got some help from the San Antonio Spurs missing some free throws. The game six was about as intense an NBA game as you'll ever see. Oh, it was off the chart. Absolutely fantastic. Now Diaw after the missed three from Cole. And that one's good, Parker. Well, the drive to the bucket was nice, but how about the finger roll finish? Beautiful. Tipped. Diaw with the steal. And Parker, here we go. That's a two from Bellinelli. And he misses the go-ahead basket. Talking about Chris Anderson, guys, the bird man. We weren't sure if he was going to be able to fly last season, but he did latch on with a very good Miami Heat team who was in need of some help rebounding, which is his strength. He still can do that and block shots as well. And the bird man, a fan favorite from his days in Denver. The tattoos, his kinetic style of play, certainly drawing attention. Well, he's an athletic presence inside at both ends of the floor. Defensively, he can slide his feet and block shots. And offensively, he's a guy who kind of hangs out on the weak side and finishes plays by catching and dunking. Now, here's Anderson. Allen. Bellinelli is covering. Allen kicks to LeBron. Here's Cole. Miami no good on that time either. San Antonio leading. Here's Bellinelli. Puts the lead pass in front of him. Bonner's shot good. Intelligent passing there to make that hoop possible. The Heat have gone 6 of 12 from the field here in the first quarter. Take a look at the rebound totals, guys. That's plus 5 now on the glass. And, Steve, I don't think there's any question which team came out with more energy and enthusiasm. And Norris Cole is going to pick up the fight. So that will be his second foul of the game. We're in the bonus, and we'll go to the line to shoot two. And Parker drops them both. There's not a lot you can say that hasn't been said before about his skill at the charity strike. The Heat trail by six. And Cole kicks to LeBron. Carries it from three-point range. LeBron's got eight. Boy, he's so hard to stop, guys, because he poses a ton of matchup problems for the defense. I'm not sure what he was thinking about there. That's a, that's a strange foul. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe he just wanted to take a break for a minute. And Parker drops them both. Nine seconds left in the first quarter. Allen dishes to Cole. Anderson launches a three. And LeBron gets it to go with the assist by Anderson. And that's 11 points for LeBron. A good game so far as we conclude the first quarter. And off we go, a close game. Now starting the second quarter. And a moment to look at the scoring approach in terms of where the points are coming from for San Antonio. A lot of time they've been spending at the foul line so far, guys. They'll take those points all game long if they can get them. And I like the physical play we're seeing, too, because this is a club that's really pounding the paint area and scoring inside. Backing them down is Duncan. Blocked. But they recover. Shot clock at two. Parker's shot is off. The defense was ready for him that time, and they had to be. He is so powerful in the lane. From the sideline, let's catch up with Boris Burke. Thank you, Kevin. Tony Parker and teammate Boris Diaw have known each other since high school back in France. Boris says of Tony, quote, he's a point guard who can do it all. He can be an organizer and make the team play. Other times, he's going to be a scoring point guard. It's pretty rare to have both. And guys, Coach Popovich talked about how Parker's decision-making has matured as far as reading when to pass and when to score. He's found a great balance as the years have gone on, guys. He can do it all, Doris. Pass, shoot, a special talent. For San Antonio, they've gone one of three to start out the second quarter. You know, I thought San Antonio really was an outstanding team. Fun to watch. 
excellent at both ends of the floor. But one statistical thing that stood out was they defended at a high level without committing a lot of fouls. That takes discipline and smarts. They still couldn't finish, even though it looked like he had a lane to the rim. But too often, that's the story for him. Pattier, the pass to win. And no good. Had a chance to take the lead. And uh, San Antonio shooting just 39% from the field, struggling to find that net. Clark, as you said about uh, that Spurs team, just a team that does not foul very often. Doesn't give away three points. And, Steve, they led the league in fewest fouls last season. Well, that's part of Greg Popovich's mantra. I mean, uh, don't give up anything easy. You, you, you can't guard a free throw, obviously. You can't guard a fast break. So, so important for the Spurs to avoid fouls and take care of the basketball and be efficient offensively, and that helps their D. And that's out of bounds. San Antonio will retain possession. Boy, that pass was in the air a long time. Long enough for him to get a finger on it anyway and send it out of bounds. Kawhi Leonard's check in for Mano Ginobili. Green against Wade. Green kicks to splitter. Dishes at the park. Baseline jumper. And that one's good. Parker's got 10. Well, Clark, we've seen the lead change hands quite a bit in this one. Yeah, we sure have. I mean, it's been a bit of a windshield wiper game. I mean, back and forth, the lead has gone five times, so no one in clear control yet. I think both teams feel like they can win. They both have confidence. Uh, so we'll see which team can kind of ride the momentum and take control of this game. Here's Green following the score by Tony Parker. Lock at six, and Mario Chalmers gets the whistle that time. That's foul number two for him. Boy, with two fouls now, he really has to be disciplined and under control for the rest of this half. Duncan dishes to Parker. Good on the shot. Parker's got four points this quarter. You know, that's been a big part of their offense in the early stages. I mean, their success working the ball inside and getting points from close range right at the rim. And I would continue to do it. You know, force the defense to maybe send a double team. Now you've got other options to work with offensively. One of the holy grails, if you will, for statistical achievement is to put a quadruple double on the books. Duncan came close in the 2003 finals, but he also came fairly close to it last year as well. 31, 18 rebounds, 6 assists, and 5 blocks. Boris Diaz checked in for San Antonio. And a little under three and a half minutes elapsed in the second quarter of play. Duncan, the pass to Leonard. Back to Duncan. Somehow ignores the tight D and gets the way up. Duncan's got six. You know, Stevie, talk about big games for Duncan last season. Don't forget the game against Utah with 21 rebounds, 22 points six blocks. He was incredible. Yeah, he's the first player 35 or older to post a 20-20 in five games since 2001 when, ironically enough, his old teammate David Robinson reached that mark. So, something, something's going on down there in San Antonio, I guess. Well, a pick was set at the perfect angle on the floor, and he used it nicely. Well, that's a play we may see from them a few more times. Why not? I mean, when it works, you go back to it. Make them stop you. Here's what Miami's going with right now. Chris Anderson has checked in for Bosch. And it's Norris Cole in for Mario Chalmers. There's the feed to Cole. And Haslam kicks to Cole. And the Heat, another three. Well, I tell you what, Greg Popovich, a really impressive leader for the Spurs. He's able to keep all of his players locked in to what's best for the team. Has a military background, played basketball and study at the Air Force Academy before serving five years in the Air Force. And you know some of the leadership that he brings to his position was learned from his past experiences. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. And Clark, you mentioned Pop's time at the Air Force Academy. That's where he got his start in the coaching ranks. Yeah, six years as an assistant there. He was head coach at Pomona, an assistant coach with uh, the Golden State Warriors and the Spurs, and eventually moved into the front office in San Antonio. But, wow, what an amazing run it's been for him. 17 years as the head coach of the Spurs. Right Let's check out what Doris Burke has for us. Kevin, thank you. There was a lot of thought about how the Heat could improve after they lost to the Mavs in the 2011 NBA Finals. Many called for a veteran point guard, but the team felt comfortable with who they had. 
Coach Eric Spolster said, we felt we had one of the younger point guard tandems in the league that we can build on and offer us championship minutes right now. They grew into that role and were a big part of their back-to-back -back titles. Spolster says they earned it with their hard work, and he couldn't be happier, guys. And thank you, Doris. Haslam, good ball movement here by Miami. Now the dish to Cole. T. Wade on the wing. Let's it fly. And he drops that one in. Cole's got five points now in the quarter. San Antonio's gone two or three when they've stepped beyond the arc in the second quarter. Bonner dishes to Parker. Outside, Green. Back to Parker. And the shot is good. Parker's got 14 points for the game. Seems like they're on their heels every time defensively because the ball continues to go into the post. Well, if they don't pick up the aggression, things are only going to get worse. Tough to hit that shot when you got the defense right in your shirt. And it's blocked. To the inside. Here's LeBron. He is an automatic finisher when he gets into that area. You know, he picks the simple one-handed stuff to get the two points. Well, those could be an important two points, too, guys, in a close game like this one. Here's Green. He's got five. He kicks it to Parker. Gets it to go. He's got 16. Now here's Anderson. And out of bounds as this Spurs gained possession. Really poor decision on that pass. Five seconds left in the first half. Ginobili banked in off the glass. Ginobili's got five points so far. They have repeatedly probed inside in the first half, guys, and it's paid dividends. Yeah, it sure has, Clark. I mean, with as many points as they've gotten in the paint, they really haven't had to do much on the perimeter. And the first half ends in a close one. Spurs lead by five. And it's time now. Now, presented by Sprint. And we flip the Sprint Halftime Report, presented by Sprint. A magnificent view of growing high rises in downtown Miami as we welcome you back. What a game for Tony Parker. He's got 16 points, and four of his points have come at the foul line. He's made the most of those opportunities. Which can't be undervalued, Clark. So many times a game can come down to which team wins the free throw battle. And count it. Two points with a chance for one more at the free throw line. Those defenders look like they're out of gas. I mean, they're getting pushed around on the low block. Well, their energy is lacking. They've got to start playing harder and battle down in the paint.